How you doing, preppers? It's the troll prepper again. Um, I originally was going to make a, a part two, and, and it got, it was very funny. Um, I <laughs> honestly wish it didn't uh, create any, any uh, potential legal issues for me, and it would have. So, um, anyway, um, what I have here, um, and, and this is very rare, imported, um, you know, canned, canned honey. Um, this is about what you'll get out of a two and a half gallon, you know, if you want to, if you want to maintain the, uh, the head strength, this is about 170 proof and, uh, it will light on fire. Uh, it's not dark enough. You can't see the alcohol flame. So no point of me doing that here on video, but, um, I don't know, maybe I will. I'll just put it in as a little tidbit at the end of a different video, of a completely different topic. But anyway, um, I thought we would, uh, have a sample. Now, I do like to have it on ice, but my favorite is just straight up. And, and by the way, never pour a full shot. This stuff is better than twice as strong as what you used to, unless you're drinking, um, you know, Wild Turkey 101 or Bacardi 151 all the time and you're just drinking shots of Bacardi. Drink shots of Bacardi, you're <laughs> you have a more scarred liver than I do, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure mine is, mine looks like, uh, say hello to my little friend, <laughs> little Scarface, hugger, he's down there, you know, coke on his face, and, you know, <laughs> anyway, yeah, my liver party's probably more than it wants to, however, pow, strong stuff, all right, here, here goes, here's to you, Prost! booze ever imported from New Zealand in the history of New Zealand. <laughs> now, like I said, I do like to mix it with ice. One of the reasons I do is I'll put, I'll put ice in the glass and, uh, you know, I don't mind it if it melts a little bit because honestly that takes the uh, strength down and it, it turns it into more of a, more of a sipping fluid. So I'm gonna let that melt for a second. We're gonna talk about some other uses. Um, if you make a spirit this strong, um, you won't find a better dis disinfectant. Uh, you know, the booze that we can buy at the stores is actually pretty weak. 80 proof is only 40% alcohol. This is a, about 170, and I say about 170, I can't tell you the precise number. I don't have a uh, specific gravity meter that would allow me to do accurate readings at this content. But I know the percentage of alcohol that went in to the still in New Zealand because, because you know, I, I saw it. I saw the video. I mean, shit, you guys saw it too. And um, but anyway, I, you know, and I saw it go in, and, and I knew what the what the uh, specific gravity of that was, and I also know that um, quantity-wise, I just took the cream. There was plenty. I'm sorry, my friend in New Zealand just took the cream. <laughs> there was plenty. Of, uh, of booze still left in the um, in the in the water, you know. So the water was never really quite purified. So we, I guess we could we could probably call the entire experiment just a tremendous failure. But um, you know, I mean, you know, some of these impurities are just delicious, and so I'm gonna have some more. That's probably a lot. It is a lot. But I'm gonna go ahead and drink it <laughs> because I just enjoy it. Anyway, um, medicinal purposes, uh, cleaning wounds, um, dental issues. Um, you know, if you have a lack of water, brushing your teeth is going to be hard. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sure it should remain a priority for people, but, um, you know, you're going to run out of Listerine at some point and um, you're going to run out of sugar at some point too. But, I mean, you know, if, if you have a bumper crop of, uh, you know, fruit, you know, you can make you know, cider out of almost any fruit. And, and that's why cider was so prevalent. And then you can, you can take that cider and you can further purify that cider to last indefinitely. This, just in a bottle of cork, you know, you're good for 40 years. Longer, 100 years. <laughs> I don't know, there's probably some whiskeys people are drinking that are 200 years old. I, I really don't know. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not that big of a connoisseur that I would spend thousands of dollars on a bottle of some old shit that I can make myself. So, um, 
I mean that a friend of mine in New Zealand can, um, you know, um, or when I go visit him, you know, I can make it there, you know, of course. So, um, anyway. This is, this is brilliant. If, if you like the whiskeys, um, I highly recommend you getting a uh, oak-fired barrel. I have not done that. I really like the raw stuff. It's just delicious. And you can, you, can, you can mix it down to whatever percentage you're comfortable with. And you can add flavorings to it as well. I mean, just go online. And, um, you know, you, I mean, it's legal here in New Zealand. So, <laughs> I'm sorry, back in New Zealand because I'm, I'm home now. Um, yeah. Um, but, you know, you can just pour it in there, and it's, it's got the right color and the right flavor and textures. And you can do it like a, like a dark rum. You can do a light rum. Um, you can do an American whiskey. Uh, you can do a scotch whiskey. And, and these are just the flavorings. They're artificial. I don't do it. I don't think it's necessary. If I want a charred oak barrel to age my whiskey in, I will go buy an oak barrel and char it. And then pour my whiskey in it and age it for 10 years, 12 years. And think about that, that's open almost to the atmosphere with that oak, you know? You have transmutation of the alcohol back and forth from container to atmosphere, container to atmosphere, they call it the angel shit. You lose about 10% over its aging period, which is a lot, really. Well, anyway, that's what comes of honey when it's treated properly and put away for centuries. <laughs> Cheers, everyone. I hope you learned something from uh, what I believe to be the most noble use of a pressure cooker. Though it's not under pressure, at that point it's just a big stock pot with a sturdy lid. <laughs> and the Presto is plenty sturdy. That, uh, that American Harvest, I think is what it's called. Yeah, that's a nice piece of gear. But, um, you know, I'm kind of poor right now. I mean, I own my own home, so I'm mean, just not that poor. And, uh, and I'm putting myself back through school, so, you know, that's, that's great. But at the, at the same rate, I mean, I'm just now burning funds. So, yeah, I do things on the cheap. And uh, so I'm, I'm prepping on the cheap. And uh, I'm trying to share some of the stuff that, that I do on the cheap with you because I think it's valuable and, and I think it's it's something that needs to belong in every community skill set. Um, you know the Mormons won't have this in their uh, field manual, will they? They don't they don't like this stuff, but they don't like coffee either. And, and you know, just those two things makes me know they're wrong. <laughs> I'm sorry if you're Mormon. I'm not trying to insult you, but it's you know it's it's, it's like uh, Arabs and bacon. They, they they won't eat it. And I think it's because they don't have frying pans in the Middle East. I, I don't know what the hell the problem is. It seems like they have all the proper kitchen utensils. Seems like they ought to know that, you know, pork is truly clean meat to eat if you have the technology. And apparently they didn't have it, you know, when they decided that their civilization had reached its pinnacle 1,400 years ago. So... Anyway, fuck them. I'm drinking. <laughs> Cheers. Mm. Oh, God.